are doing this now only in two sites. Uh, our intention is to do them at the two sites that have the capability for generating the cells, and that is currently Ottawa and Winnipeg uh, in Canada. Uh, we're going to do 20 patients in each site. The inclusion criteria will be that they're still very much in their relapsing phase, um, but they have some evidence of activity despite having had uh, some treatments, so that we're, they're not just foregoing all the current therapies in favor of this. These have already, patients have already demonstrated they're somewhat resistant to therapy. The door will also be open for patients who are in their progressive phase, but we have to have something to measure. And we recognize that some patients who are even in the secondary progressive or even primary progressive, despite the fact that they're not uh, having relapses, may have very active MRIs. And if we can identify such patients, there's no reason if they've had activity in the, in the prior year uh, that they would not be eligible to participate. Unlike our other bone marrow transplant uh, study, which had substantial risks because of all the chemotherapy that we had to give, um, this uh, study is actually be relatively easy. There's no chemotherapy involved whatsoever, so there's no risk of chemotherapy-related side effects. I guess when you take the bone marrow aspirate, it doesn't feel very good. It's used. Uh, there's a needle that goes in the hip, and we extract the bone marrow, which can be a little painful at the time. So that, that's probably the only risk uh, or, or negative. Um, then the marrow aspirate, the, the, the mixture of cells and blood, goes off to the lab where the cells are then separated and uh, put into special growth media and in, in a very specialized laboratory uh, that is capable of growing these cells in absolute sterile uh, conditions such that uh, no two pa even though we may have more than one patient cells growing in the laboratory at a time they're, they're in separate facilities self-contained facilities so there's no chance of of a mixture um, they're growing up it takes two to three weeks in general to grow enough cells for this study which will be for a single dose uh, treatment uh, and then enough cells also saved so that we can do some testing after this study is finished. Presumably, if we've been able to achieve our goal and seen an effect, we're going to want to know why. If we see an effect in some people but not others, we're also going to want to know uh, what made their cells different. And so we can ask these questions because we'll have the cells frozen away and be able to um, do those experiments later. The, the uh, mesenchymal cells that we're using for this are called autologous. So they come from the, the person. And a question was asked some time ago, are MS patients' mesenchymal stem cells as good as somebody's who doesn't have MS? That's a valid question because if they're not, they don't have the same capacity to, to do things, then maybe we should be taking a central source. Uh, and there was, there was no apparent differences when we checked them in the various ways we did. Uh, are there other alternative sources? Well, there are. There are several companies that make en masse mesenchymal stem cells. We did a small study a year ago uh, with uh, cells that were derived from, from placenta, which is another good source for these things, and they, they grew them up. They were well tolerated. We didn't have to immunosuppress the host so that there was no rejection of the mesenchymal stem cells. But there's, there's always a question when you pull all these cells from another person, and then are they going to do the same thing? There are a lot of things about stem cells that are, that are bringing both mystique and, and, and promise and a lot of hope to people. Uh, I think that uh, our, our MS patients read about this possibility. The technology has moved very quickly and we're now in a position to be able to get the cells and get them in a, in a, in a, in a way that's safe and able to produce them in enough masses that we can start a trial. So it's, so, uh, it's no more science fiction. This is, this is reality today. And it's exciting to think that we could tap into the body's own natural ability to repair, 
without having to manipulate uh, uh, the immune system with drugs and, and or chemotherapy, which, which we know has as many long-lasting effects. So we're harnessing nature here and in a way that hasn't been done before. And, and that's very exciting to think that we can do that.